spaces, uh, I noticed that your own particular website uh, features a lot of your own artwork. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you tell us a little bit about um, how that comes about? Uh, is it, does do you feel like your art um, and uh, your it's it's obviously a passion of yours. Does it inform your in, uh, research interests as well? Well, let's just say I was a failed artist. I'm a failed artist, <laughs> so hence academia. No, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I was actually, you know, when I was in my Marxist stage in India, how, we all have to be Marxist at some oh, absolutely. point. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's part of the it's thing. Right yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> so when I was, yeah, when I was going through that, we used to do mural art and it was all about, you know, art as a, as a social statement and... And so I actually moved to San Francisco and I did a mural at a club, actually, and uh, it just got demolished only a year ago, but it was a club called Tongue and Groove. And, you know, it felt like very much part of a community. And, um, yeah, it was great. We lived. And then I realized, hang on, I don't want to be living off ramen noodles for, you know, <laughs> for a while. So, uh, yeah, so I thought academia may allow me to upgrade my food habits, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the arts definitely have influenced me in a sense that, you know, when you shift careers, like I, I, was, I used to be in my previous life an art dealer because that was the closest I could get to making money and being in the art world. And uh, then I completely shifted gears and went into academia and policy. Uh, you realize that you can be, you start to realize how you, how irreverent you can be towards that because one, the whole myth of transferring and shifting careers is, it's so formidable, but when you do it, you realize it's completely possible and not only that, it's potentially very essential, I think, in this particular day and age because it makes you, um, yeah, it, it makes you see parallels where seemingly there are none, right? Mm. So, um, and now, interestingly, after more than a, a decade and a half, I think I, I, I was in the art world, yeah, uh, for long ago in 1998. And um, now I'm doing a project with my, a, a, a colleague of mine at Erasmus where we, we've got this, um, uh, where we're doing uh, how new media is impacting the art world in terms of how do you evaluate what constitutes as good art versus bad art. For example, if you get a million likes on a mediocre painting, does that make it a better painting? Or uh, we, are, we are actually consulting for groups like Sotheby's, Christie's, so on, uh, where we are talking about how new media is impacting her art evaluation. Uh, why do people put particular prices to particular art? And what are the influencing factors? And new media has such a powerful role in terms of like what the audiences are saying about it, it's, mm. you know. So um, interestingly, I've come back to art in a sort of uh, fortuitous way. I find we are, nowadays our disciplines are connecting and, you know, before interdisciplinary seemed like something you'd put on a grant and hope you'd get the grant and not really. Now I think it's become an essential aspect, like you have to look you have to follow the question and that question can lead to multiple disciplines you know you just want the best ways of addressing that question you so know? the idea of crossing disciplines that that's not a barrier maybe as much as it might have been in the past or being able to no I think it's essential it, it, it's an essential aspect because I think it's it's almost the whole idea of discipline sometimes can be it just it, it's it helps to contain your subject. It helps to make you a micro expert, sure. But to do justice to a particular question, I I think at least you have to be open to it. Of course, surely maybe you'll find the answer within your discipline, right? But you have to be open to saying maybe the answer will lie in another discipline. Talking about you know this whole thing with sociology, with anthropology, or political science, or looking at it, we can learn a lot from, like for example, how people use new media for politics and uh, their sort of opinions. Right? It's very transferable to how uh, people are forming opinions on art, for example. And there's a lot more literature, I would say, on politics and new media for for good reason is because there's a high stake involved. People are, a lot of politicians are using it. There's such euphoria that Obama really capitalized on new media and thereby he became as if it delivered him the presidency, right? But 
so why not harness what's out there? Some fields have just done more extensive work on a topic that you have versus you know uh, the one that you're pursuing. So you can always learn from that. All, you know, Picasso did. He stole from everywhere. I mean, he stole from African art, and well, it became art. What was his? Uh, <laughs> let's see. A, a good artist. A good artist imitates. A great artist steals. Yeah, exactly. So you know, uh, and the best part is if you look into another discipline and bring it to yours, it's original. There you go. So quick tip, huh? Since we are in a society which needs to move, move, move.